हेलो गाइज आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर इन पिंक ऑफ हेल्थ बोथ मेंटल एज वेल एज फिजिकल बिफोर बिगिनिंग टू डेज फार्म कास्ट आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर द ओवरवेलमिंग रेस्पॉन्स टू द फार्म कास्ट दर आई पोस्टेड यस टे एंड आई नेवर थॉट गैस आई गेट सच ओवरवेलमिंग रेस्पॉन्स फॉर दिस एंड दिस इज गोन हेल्प यू सो मच इन योर प्रिपरेशन and i'm able to do these small things for you guys for your preparation the reason being you can thank covid 19 um that is because i'm having the reason i'm having some free time and i can devote it for your preparation in fact i have a feeling sometimes nowadays as if i'm also preparing with you guys so that's great all right guys so let us begin uh, today's farm cast and uh, the first disorder is guys acute mountain sickness it has been asked a couple of times in fact recently it was asked in your aims exam so guys think what is the drug of choice for acute mountain sickness i'll give you a clue it is a diuretic i bet majority of you guys must have figured out the answer now right so it is acetazolamide a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor now let me tell you the mechanism of action guys acetazolamide uh, if you remember we have discussed in the lectures it decreases csf production right and because of that it decreases cerebral edema so it can also be used in uh, cerebral edema as well that can be seen which can be associated with mountain sickness and in fact the cause of mountain sickness is cerebral edema so how does it produce effect in acute mountain sickness that is by decreasing cerebral edema second point because acetazolamide can decrease csf production it can decrease csf pressure it is also used for treatment of idiopath idiopathic intracranial hypertension or pseudo tumor cerebri plus it is also used to decrease or prevent csf leak which can be seen after lumbar puncture guys all of you remember lumbar puncture can cause post lumbar puncture headache and that is because of leak of csf now right to prevent that leak we can decrease the csf pressure by giving acetazolamide so guys remember all in all the most important point acute mountain sickness drug of choice is acetazolamide let us move on to the second disorder and this is a very important disorder for the neat pg exam guys acute dystonia think what is the drug of choice for acute dystonia your clue is it is an anticholinergic drug and it was recently asked in your aims exam guys acute dystonia what is the drug of choice the drug of choice is an anticholinergic drug that is known as trihexyphenidyl or benzhexol you need to remember both the names because we don't know what they are going to give in your exam right my second question to you guys is where else trihexyphenidyl or benzhexol is drug of choice where else apart from acute dystonia think guys think even this can be asked in your exam guys it is also drug of choice for drug induced parkinsonism so you know parkinsonism is also a part of eps extra pyramidal side effect so there are two extra pyramidal side effects where these anticholinergic drug is drug of choice one is acute dystonia second one is drug induced parkinsonism now guys acute dystonia there are two points which i would like to point out which are important and there there is a very high likelihood of these two points being asked in future one earliest eps which is the extra pyramidal side effect to be seen earliest your answer is acute dystonia and they can ask you acute dystonia is more common in which age group right young middle age group or elderly it is more common in young patients so guys i'll repeat two points which are important about acute dystonia it is the earliest eps plus it is more common in young patients now let me take this opportunity to ask you another question about eps guys tell me which is the most common eps most common eps it also starts with alphabet a like at acute dystonia so you might get confused guys it is akathisia so akathisia guys remember akathisia is most common but earliest one is acute dystonia right guys let us move on to our third disorder for today acute panic attack i get a lot of doubts about acute panic attack and students they ask me sir what is the drug of choice is the drug of choice benzodiazepine or is the drug of choice ssris ifloxacin right so they do get confused guys but remember acute panic attack we can never use ssri just remember the concept which we studied that ssris they will take at least 2 to 6 weeks to produce anti anxiety effect in fact for the first one month 
they themselves cause anxiety as a side effect and that is why we always use benzodiazepines with SSRIs. So SSRIs can never be used for an acute attack of anxiety or acute panic attack. Rather, here the drug of choice would be benzodiazepines. But if they ask you long term management like for generalized anxiety disorder, what is the drug of choice, then your answer would be SSRI. So for guys long, long term, I'll use SSRI because you know benzodiazepines, I cannot use them for long term because of the drawback side effects of benzodiazepines whereas SSRIs they are manageable on long term use. So guys remember the crux is acute attack of anxiety, acute panic attack, drug of choice are benzodiazepines. But long term management of anxiety like generalized anxiety disorder I'll go for SSRIs. Right let's move on guys to the fourth disorder for today and that is an acute variceal bleeding. Now this is again a bone of contention, doubts among students what is the drug of choice for acute variceal bleed? I will not ask you here. I would rather tell you that there are two drugs between which students are always confused because you know medical science is always evolving, new drugs are coming, new data are coming and things they keep on changing every day, every week, every month. So there are two drugs we are confused with. One is octreotide, another one is terlipressin, right? So which is the drug of choice? Guys remember best drug among octreotide and terlipressin is terlipressin. The reason being the only drug or the only vasoconstrictor that is used in acute variceal bleeding that decreases mortality is terlipressin. Yes, so octreotide does not affect mortality, terlipressin does. Second important point is terlipressin, it has a sustained effect on the portal pressure whereas octreotide's effect on portal pressure is transient, it is not that sustained. So overall terlipressin is much much better drug. So guys in your exams if they ask you which is the best drug, your answer would be terlipressin. But still terlipressin is not that widely available and used. So classically the golden drug of choice is still octreotide. So I feel they will never ask you drug of choice and give both octreotide and terlipressin in the option. They will give either octreotide or terlipressin. They might give you octreotide and vasopressin. Now there you know the clear cut answer is octreotide. Nevertheless guys if they ask you drug of choice for me the answer is still octreotide. Best drug terlipressin. Right now guys coming to the last disorder for today that is Addison's disease. So Addison's disease guys what is the drug of choice think? Is it hydrocortisone? Is it prednisolone? Is it dexamethasone? Think guys think. What do you think is the answer? The answer is in your brain in some file which might be corrupted. So what I'm doing now is running antivirus to decorrupt that file, right? So guys think which is the answer? Guys just think the concept. Addison's disease, why am I giving steroid? Is it for replacement? Is it for anti-inflammatory effect? Is it for immunomodulatory effect? Obviously it is for replacement. That means the steroid that I, I should give here should be exactly similar in potency to the steroid that is present uh, produced in my body that is cortisol. So think which steroid is more similar to cortisol. Is it hydrocortisone, prednisolone, dexa, even for the, from the name itself we can find out it is hydrocortisone. That is why remember guys Addison's disease intravenous hydrocortisone would be the drug of choice. And remember mineralocorticoids like fludrocortisone are never given for an acute management. They are only given for long term management with hydrocortisone but in acute attack of adrenal insufficiency we give only hydrocortisone right guys so this is what we had to discuss today guys so i'm going alphabetically so we are still cruising through the alphabet a so likewise i'll keep on discussing every day one farm cast where i'll discuss the drugs of choice and some important points regarding these and as i said guys every day i will end this podcast with some com common concerns of students with uh, regards to preparation for the neat exam or aims exam now today's concern is another important thing guys which i which I'll, i have formulated in the form of question which students they have asked me many times and the question is sir i will not be able to do this subject x any subject uh videos or notes because i don't have any time left so then they ask me can i can i borrow 10 days or 15 days from my revision period suppose i have three months revision can i can i borrow 15 days from my revision and decrease my revision by 15 days and can i try to watch videos and uh, read notes and uh, compensate for that leftover subject guys it's a big no it's a big no you cannot take you cannot take 15 days or one month from your revision period of time because if you take those 15 days you'll be compromising the other 
18 subjects which you have studied or invested so much so you have to make a balance which means what here you cannot take days from the revision rather what you can do is you can find a way out right not to completely sabotage the subject but do at least something one option is you can do only q bank you can only solve questions go through the explanations second option is you can go through the revision videos so that is one judicious way of using revision videos for a subject which i'm not able to complete right so that is something you can do and the motto here what i'm what i'm trying to tell you is do not try to take away days from revision for these things guys do not try such kind of stunts the reason being your revision would be compromised and remember an ineffective revision is as good as not preparing guys so that is what i wanted to discuss in today's farmcast guys study well and tomorrow i will see you on the other side with another farmcast with another five drugs of choice and another important concern for your preparation bye bye take care good night this was dr anjan with you